Well, hey, everybody. It's great to be back with you again this week. So thankful that you've taken the time to spend with me and uh, to go into God's Word. And uh, I just really want to pray for you, bless you in the name of the Lord. So before we start, let me uh, have that awesome privilege to do so. So if you can just join with me and we're going to pray right now. So Father, thank you so much for each and every single person that is uh, taking the time to dive into your word. Father, I pray that you bless them. Uh, God, I just pray that you show them your love that is so amazing. And God, I just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would just begin to teach us from your word and take us on the journey that you want us to go on. God, we give you total control. We give you absolutely everything, oh God. You know all about us, so Lord, we just lay it all down at your feet right now. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you would just have your way. Bless each and every single person by your fire, by your power, by the, by the touch of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I ask, amen and amen. Well, guys, thank you so much again for taking some time to, to dive into God's Word. And uh, I really uh, hope to be able to convey some of the things that the Lord has laid upon my heart over the past few days. And it started last week when I, when I began to talk about um, the bounty, the crowning the year with bounty that the Lord had given to me from, uh, from Psalms uh, 65 and verses 6 to 13. I believe it was verse number 10 there that it talked about crowning the year with bounty. And, and I believe that the Lord wants to take us on a journey. I believe that the Lord really wants us to move into a, an area where there's signs, wonders, and miracles. And so as the Lord began to put the, the aspect of faith upon my heart, and we went through some of those things last week when we were talking about prayer, and I want to go back through them again. But I mean, I have the question that I want to present to you right now. Most of us that will be watching this have probably been in the church for a while. Most of us have probably seen varying degrees of God's hand upon people's lives. Some of us have probably even experienced it firsthand what God can do in someone's life. He's amazing. We all recognize that. Most everybody that's watching me right now would say, I absolutely love being in the presence of God. I love seeing him touch lives. I know that he can turn things. and There's nothing too great for my God. But the question is, when's the last time that we've really started to see the hand of God move in signs and wonders and miracles? Hmm. You know, it's been something that's been really pressed upon me as of late. And so I began to ask the question, and I don't know if it's something that maybe is just me. And if it's just me, humor me and come along with me. But I don't know if it's something that God is saying to just me. Well, yes, I can do that. But when are you going to step up so that I can use you to show more? Hmm. So I've been convicted over the past week and a half. I won't lie to you, it's been a real struggle for me to go through some of these scriptures and begin to really apply them into my life. You see, there's a difference between knowing what the Word of God says and applying the Word of God into our lives. And I think sometimes we in the church get very comfortable. We get very comfortable listening to the sermons. We get very comfortable about, um, you know, being, you know, being comfortable. That's really what it comes down to. And we don't like that discomfort. We don't really want to step outside of those comfort zones. We will a little bit. But man, what is God really asking us to do? Hmm. So I began to become very challenged over the past couple of weeks here with some things. So last week, as I began to talk about the aspect of faith and believing and what that means, well, I'll tell you, it's something that... It's easy to say, not so easy to do. So let's just go back and review a couple of things here. So Matthew 21, 21 is where we kind of started off last week. And so if you were to have your Bibles, I have the New International Version, or sorry, the uh, New American Standard Version. Lots of people use other versions, whatever version you have, that's great. Just uh, make sure that you've got one. So Matthew 21 and 21 says this. And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you shall not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast in the sea, it shall happen. Verse 22, And all things you ask in prayer, believing, 
you shall receive. Man alive, I'll tell you, there's been lots of people that have taken that verse and they've applied it to so many different things in life. And uh, what we have to recognize is that when we're asking those things, we're asking them not for our own personal gain, shall we say. We're asking them to see the will of the Father accomplished. We're asking them to see his kingdom come and be established on earth as it is in heaven. Remember, that's the way Jesus prayed. It always started out. He taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right? So we recognize that. So we understand that the very first and primary thing that we need to do when we go into that aspect of prayer, when we're beginning to lay our petitions down before the Lord, that it's to honor him. First and foremost, above everything else. And I would believe that everybody that's listening to me right now within the sound of my voice would say, yes, of course, we want to honor God. We recognize that he's king. We recognize he's Lord. We recognize that he's the one that we want to serve. Amen. We want to say that. Amen. That's where we want to start out with. So then we take this verse and we go, okay, well, if we're asking, believing, and receiving it, it shall be done. Okay, great. So then if we go into Mark 11 and 24, we talked a little bit about this one last week as well. And it says, therefore, I say to you, all the things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and it shall be granted to you. Again, now we're taking a step deeper into the things that we're praying for. So I must confess to you that this whole aspect of believing things before they actually come to fruition has been very difficult and very challenging. And I think that as you begin to stay in the church for year after year after year after year after year, you, you become almost dull to some of the things. And, and not that you lose your zeal, necessarily, not that you lose that, that fervor for the Lord and that, um, that excitement. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that sometimes we have to challenge ourselves and sometimes we have to examine our own hearts. And so I recognize that as I've been going into prayer with the Lord, that he's been really shining a light down in my heart and in my life to say, Stephen, I'm looking to do some things through you, but I need you to be open and I need you to trust me. And I need you to make sure that when I'm calling you to do some things, that you're going to jump in with both feet, that you're not going to be wavering, that you're going to trust me without doubt. And so I looked at those verses and I thought to myself, my goodness, they are very challenging verses. Because there are times in life that we go through situations and circumstances that we would like it to be easy. We don't like the tough rows. We don't, we don't really want to wait. We want instantaneous answers. We want things to happen on our terms, in our way, most times. Now, maybe you're far more spiritual than I am, and maybe you're saying, okay, no, that's not me at all. I, I always want to pray God's will, and, and it's not anything that I want to do. It's all God's will, and you know what? That's absolutely great and fantastic, and keep going and start proclaiming it out that uh, this is the way that we need to pray and keep believing and keep being excited and keep praying in faith like it's already done. But I, I must confess that there are times when I go into prayer I'm asking for things, but I also am doubting. I don't know about you, but I'm just being real with you right now. And there's lots of things that I've prayed for that I've seen absolutely come to fruition. I've seen God move by his power, by his mercy, by his touch. And I'll tell you, it's been amazing. And why I would doubt, I, I don't know. I sometimes go back to those old Israelites walking in the in the desert. They seen all these things every single day. God's hand, God's miracle moving power. Then they had fresh bread, they had manna and quail every single day when they were out there. They get to a Red Sea and they see it burst open and walk across on dry land. How could you ever doubt God? But yet they did. See, I think part of it is human nature. So we don't want to beat ourselves up over it. We want to recognize it. We want to confess it. And we want to deal with it. And we want to move it forward. So one of the things that the Word of God says is that in John 8 and 32, it says, The truth of God's Word will make you free. So we all know this. And the truth will make you free. You, you, you've heard this several times over throughout your life. 
The truth of God's word is important to recognize. And lots of times we can get it in our heads, but it's a tough transition to get to our hearts. And I think a lot of us would understand that we've gone through situations in life, and that's the way it's been. So if that is the case, what I was really impressed upon is that we're talking about faith. We're talking about moving things forward. We're talking about this journey that God has for us. Well, then there's this aspect of trusting him. There's this aspect of taking the truth of God's word and applying it and recognizing the power that God has and what he wants to do through you and I. Now, I'm using this from a personal standpoint of where the Lord has taken me because sometimes that's all that I can do. But I believe that what God has placed upon my heart, he is also challenging several people that are watching me on a regular basis. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you're not seeing the miracles on a regular basis, do you want to see miracles on a regular basis? Do you think that that's the life that a Christian should have. Now, we know that the Word of God says that He comes to give life and life more abundantly. Well, can I show you something else that's rather interesting when we look at the Word of God and how amazing Jesus is? See, when Jesus was on this earth, He performed miracles left, right, and center, so much that the Word of God says that He did so many that these books couldn't even contain it. It's quite unimaginable when you begin to think about it. So if that's the case, and if the amazing part about this is that Jesus is asking us to do the same thing, what an awesome responsibility that is. What an awesome opportunity that is. You see, the difference between, and I hate to use this word religion, but the difference between the Christian religion and many other of the religions is the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. You know, they're not really talking about healing. They're not really talking about seeing the great things of God operating in the disciples. Now, they might say, oh, well, this comes from Allah or maybe Buddha, you know, these great things. But they're not saying that they're walking in it and they're doing these things see but our god is the living god and he wants to give that authority and that power over to us so that we can operate in the very gifts of the spirit so that when we operate in those things we bring honor and glory to him but we are participating in the great wonders and the mysteries of heaven you see, I think that that's awesome. The fact that Jesus, the king of all the ages, the king of the universe says, you know what? I want to share this with you, you know, and we want to do it in the right fashion. We want to do it to bring him honor. But man, can you imagine that the king wants us to do the same thing as what he was doing? So I began to ask this question. Lord, you're asking us to do these things. You're asking us to pray a certain way. You're asking us to think a different way. What are the very basics that you're calling us to do so that we can operate in these signs, wonders, and miracles? What is it that you're asking us to step out in faith to do? So when I began to look at the basics on prayer and the things that are going to catapult us or accelerate our journeys, I believe are three basic things. I think there's faith, I believe there's confidence, and there's the anointing. Well, we talked a little bit about faith last week in some of these scripture verses, and we just talked a little bit about it up here. Now, we recognize that faith is the substance of things not seen, right? So we understand that. We recognize from the word of God that without faith, it's impossible to please God. We recognize that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. So if we understand that faith is one of the foundational components that we need to walk in this area, then we need to take the word of God and we need to begin to listen to that. And I know for me personally, I need to take this Bible and I need to just meditate on some of these words of believing and not wavering. You know, we talked about it last week, James 5 and 5. You know, ask in faith, not wavering, not this up and down. Well, I believe one day, oh, well, it didn't go my way. So the next day I'm kind of, oh, well, maybe that's just not the way it should be. No, we need to take that 
and we need to believe that. We talked about confidence, confidence in asking, confidence in going before our God. You know, we looked at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 and 23 of having confidence to go before the Father, having confidence to go before the throne because of the blood of the Lamb. We have the authority because of Jesus that we can go to him. We also recognize that if we don't have the confidence because we've done some things that have taken us away, that have taken us away from the, the path of righteousness, then when we get into his presence, we need to pray, we need to repent, and we need to move forward so that we do have the confidence to ask our Father for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, the thing that with faith is sometimes we don't have to go any further than that old centurion. You know, faith is something that amazes our God. You know, what did what the centurion do? He went before Jesus and said, no, you don't even have to come to my place. Just say the word. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And it says, Jesus marveled. <laughs> you don't see that too many times in the word of God, where Jesus is amazed. Jesus is marveled at this man's faith. So if that means that he did it for the centurion, man, I think that that means that he can do it and be amazed with us. And I think that he wants to be amazed with us. It's just a matter of this is a journey. And we, of course, need the Holy Ghost. You know, 1 John 2 and 20 talks about the anointed one that we know who has taught us. So we recognize and we can go through scripture after scripture after scripture as far as the Holy Ghost and the anointing goes. We absolutely need the Holy Ghost. You know, Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall be filled with power and the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So before we even step out into realms of faith and confidence, we re need to recognize our, our, um, uh, our, our ability to rely on the Holy Ghost knowing that he lives within us, knowing that he can do all these things, knowing that when we operate by the word, you know, and we'll get into this, uh, you know, and in, in as, as a couple of weeks go on here, but we need to recognize that the Holy Ghost operates on the word. See, right back in the very beginning, we've taught this before in Genesis, the Holy Ghost is the one that broods over the waters. But he didn't do anything until the word was spoken. Let there be light. As soon as the word was spoken, boom, the Holy Ghost goes into action. It's the same principle. Nothing has changed. So when Jesus walked upon this earth, he had a relationship with his father. He did what the father told him to do. And as he began to speak what the father would have him to speak, the Holy Ghost brought it into action, empowered him to do so, and, and the miracles were released. So... The basic foundation, we need to have a relationship with the Father. So this is not about um, ritual. It's not about um, the do's and don'ts. It's about relationship. All comes down to that. So here's what I want to suggest to you. I don't know what you guys do in your personal life, but the Lord really kind of brought some things around to me and said, that your faith is like a muscle. You need to exercise it. I can, I can get that. So when you go to exercise, if you were to go to the gym for 12 hours one day, man alive, you, if you put in 12 hours, man, that is something fantastic. But does that 12 hours do you for the entire month? And then the next month you go and you work out another 12 hours. And then for the other 29 days or 30 days of the month, you don't do anything. That's not the way real exercise works. So can I, can I propose to you that we would take a journey together? And I know that sometimes this is rather difficult, but when you take a look at athletes, very, very trained athletes, very skilled athletes, they typically have a routine. Now, I, I've known a few people in, in as far as the evangelists go and, you know, when they begin to walk in their areas of ministry. I've even known a few pastors over the years and kind of the routines that they've had. Can I suggest something to us? Can I suggest that for the next few weeks that we pick some times very, very specifically that we're going to take and we're going to pray? 
and we're going to start to believe God's word. Now, maybe you already do this. Maybe you already have a specific time set and you say, no, from this time to this time, this is my time with God. I shut phones off. I shut TVs off. I go into my closet. I close the door. That's it. That's all. Nobody bug me until that stuff. Maybe you do. If you don't, can I suggest that, that starting this new year, that we select a time that we're going to dedicate and say, no, this is going to be my time with the Lord. No matter what time that is. Maybe it's in the morning. Maybe it's in the afternoon. Maybe it's at night before bed. It really doesn't matter. What I want to really convey to you is that this is about consistency. It's quality over quantity. Okay. So if you think about even developing a relationship with somebody, you would know that if you had one great big amount of time together and then you didn't see them for a year and then you go back to them again you spend all this time again you would recognize that your your personal uh, intimacy in that relationship is probably pretty shallow but if you dedicate time each and every single day what happens is you start to develop something that goes far deeper far greater and I want to impress upon you that if you haven't had that time that we take that time that we're going to do that and so how you do that and you know for me i've got my little i've got my prayer book that i do and i i go through and i i start to pray out all those things i've got them listed out now sometimes you might say well that seems a little bit um legalistic uh but i mean for me it's how i start uh, I, you know, I, I just, I have to have it written down. It's just who I am. Lots of people aren't like that. That's okay. You don't have to be like that. I'm just offering a suggestion for you, you know, and one of the things that's really, really important as we begin to do this is we want to renew our minds by the word of God. So that means getting into the word. It means we need to shut all the things off and we need to focus right on God's word. He might lay a scripture on you. He might, um, you might put a song on your heart to sing, you know, all those different things. But let's take some time. Let's really dedicate it and say, okay, even if you've not done it before, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, half an hour, hour, two hours, whatever you're going to do, let's dedicate that time and mark it on the calendar or mark it in your phones or your iPads or your computers or however you're going to do it. Take that time because I truly believe that God wants to take us into another level another level of faith, another level of seeing his wonders, his miracle working power begin to happen because miracles are not a sovereign act of God. Miracles happen through people that are open as willing vessels, people that are going to fall in line with the word of God and are going to speak his word with authority and confidence and faith. And when that happens, let me tell you something awesome things are going to happen in your life. So I truly believe that there is an aspect of relationship that the Lord wants us to develop just like trained athletes do so that we can go to that next level so that we can really exercise, you know, what God wants to have for us. Now there's a verse Romans 12 and two, and I got this from the the passion Bible. And it's not one that I'm very familiar with, but I thought it was interesting as I began to read this. And it says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you as to live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting as I began to read that, that verse, that we need to stay renewed in our mind, that we don't want to be changed by the culture but we want the word of god we want the things in heaven to absolutely penetrate our minds and cause us to be inwardly transformed by the holy spirit so now ephesians 1 and 19 says this says i pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of god's power made available to you through faith hold on a second the immeasurable greatness. That means you cannot measure the greatness of God. God's power through faith. So we recognize that we need this faith. We need to develop this faith. We need to exercise this faith so that it can be made available to us. 
Now listen to this. It says, and again, this is in the Passion Bible. It says, made available through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works for you. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's it talking about here? Then your life will be an advertisement of this power that's working through you. My goodness. We talk a lot about social media. We talk a lot about trying to get names out there, trying to get the gospel out there. But let me tell you something. When we begin to tap in to the power of God, it becomes an advertisement for the very church of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus do to advertise himself? <laughs> he performed signs, wonders, and miracles. He didn't have computers. He didn't have cell phones. Man, it's a, they, they didn't have daily papers that were going out all the time like that. He just went out and he went about his father's business and he started performing these signs, these wonders, and these miracles. Let me tell you something. If we want to reach the lost for the, for the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we need to stand on the true faith of who Jesus is and let his word come alive within us. Let the Holy Ghost fill us with his power, his anointing, and walk in that confidence so that when we begin to pray that we're releasing his power, that's immeasurable power, into somebody else's life to see them touch for the kingdom of God. And you want to know who advertises that? It's you and it's me. That's our calling. We're called to take this step of faith. Now, what I want to what I want to convey to you is this, and I believe that the Lord really dropped this in my spirit, that lots of times we think that, okay, well, to see great big signs, wonders, and miracles, we got to see people get pulled out of wheelchairs, and we've got to see the blind eyes open and the deaf ears opened up. I'm not saying that, 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 that we shouldn't do that. What I am saying, though, is I believe that there are steps that we need to take along the way. And I believe that as God begins to release his word and release that faith and begin to exercise that through us and begin to allow us to get into this word and begin to be consistent in his presence, I totally believe that there is going to be a growing and that there's going to be an acceleration of these things that are going to happen. So I believe that as we begin to come across people that have got back aches, maybe they've got neck pain, maybe they've got knee problems, maybe there's something going on in their bodies and it might seem major, maybe it's a headache. But are we praying for those things? Are we starting to call out to God and declaring by faith his miracle working power? I believe that there is a transformation that is beginning to happen within the church of Jesus Christ today, that we are living in the end times, that Jesus is coming back, but Jesus is coming back not for a church that's weak, but for a church that is strong, that is knowledgeable in his word, that is filled with his spirit, that is walking in, in authority and in power and seeing these things come and be made known in this earth to people, the unbelievers, the believers alike, to see all these things happen to the glory of God. You see, I believe that God is moving very, very specifically at this particular point in time. And he's calling out to us and saying, okay, are you going to take these steps of faith now? Because I want to pour out my spirit more. He's not saying that he doesn't already love you. What I believe that he's saying is, I want to pour out my power through you to see people's lives touch for the kingdom of God. So, if that's the case, if Jesus said, you can do more because I go to the Father. Then we need to take his word and we need to recognize, we need to recognize now that when Jesus is saying that, that means literally that we can do more than what he did because he's now gone away to the Father and sent his spirit. So we have the opportunity to have the Holy Ghost. If we have the opportunity of the Holy Ghost, what are we doing with that opportunity now? So I believe that the Lord is really challenging us right now. And I know that there's been a lot of people. You've been in church a long time. You've seen a lot of things happen. I'm telling you that God is not through with you yet, that God has a plan, and that God is moving upon your life. And you might say, well, I don't have the finances. I don't have the physical abilities to do this, so on and so forth. Da, 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 da. I'm going to tell you something. That's all a lie from the pit of hell. And I'm going to tell you, you need to take those thoughts 
You need to cast them back into the devil's face. You need to give them a shot in the face and say, get out of my face. Get out of my ears. You're not going to have your way. I'm going to declare the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ in my family, in my home, in my work, and wherever I go. And I'm going to see his power made known. And he's going to kick every single gate of hell down and his kingdom is going to be established on earth as it is in heaven because he is the rightful king he is the lord of all he is the one that has immeasurable power he's the one that when he went to the cross he made a mockery of everything in hell so there's nothing that can defeat him because he is the almighty king he is the 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 warrior from heaven he is jehovah Sabaoth, lord of the warring host of angels let me tell you something jesus is amazing and we serve a living God we serve a God that has power that he wants to release through us if we'll take the steps of faith and do so you know the problem that we have lots of times is we've grown up in the church and we've seen too many things so we have doubt you see if you've got a little child and they go to the the edge of a let's say the edge of a couch and dad's at the end and says okay jump you know what that child does they jump they don't even think about it they just jump now, you go to a teenager, shall we say, and they're 15, 16 years old, and they go to the, to the edge of the couch, and dad says, okay, jump. They're like, uh, are you going to catch me? I'm a little bit bigger now. I'm, uh, you know, I don't think that this, this is right. You know? So there's doubt. It's the same thing. We've grown up in the church, and so what we've done is we've allowed our intellect to take over our heart. And sometimes we just need to be like those little kids and we just need to jump in both feet and we just need to say, okay, you know what, God, you're in total control of this right now. and I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to worry about what it feels like. I'm not going to worry about what happens. I'm just going to jump into your arms and I'm going to do these things. Now, we're going to take the word of God. We're going to apply the truths of God's word. We're going to take the time to dedicate and pray and to seek his faith and to see these signs, wonders, and miracles happen. Now, God has given me a few more things that I'm hoping to be able to release to you over the next couple of weeks. And I pray that it really begins to sink in because I believe that God has got a journey for each and every single one of us. I believe that it's going to accelerate some things in our lives to see his kingdom come, to see people touch for his honor and for his glory. And so just before we, we end here, I want to lift up some people in prayer. I want to go before the Lord because we're going to still continue to believe in faith for miracles to happen. You know, some I know we talked a little bit about starting small, but you know what? Sometimes we just need to lay it all out and we just need to say, God, have your way. And we're just going to come together in agreement and we're going to believe this. Now, if you don't believe this, don't pray. I'm, I'm being honest. Don't pray. We're going to believe for some complete healings. We're going to believe that uh, cancers are going to shrivel up and die, that MS is going to be cast out. We're going to talk a little bit about those sicknesses in the next couple of weeks. But we are also going to talk about this, the fact that the Holy Ghost, his job is to uphold the very name of Jesus Christ. And so we'll talk a little bit about that, but we are going to go in the name of Jesus. We're going to step out in faith. We're going to go to him in confidence, and we're going to declare by the power of the name of Jesus that people be touched and be healed. So come, just pray with me here for a few people in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you, God, for this time, for your word that you've given to us. And, God, we pray that in the very name of Jesus Christ, that you would touch these individuals, Lord, that we bring before you. God, we, we think of Pastor Bob and the situation that he's in. So God, we are just praying that you touch his mind, that you touch his lungs, that you heal him completely, that you restore him, oh God, that you just give him a brand new body, a brand new mind. God, may he walk out of that hospital completely restored, oh God, with an anointing upon his life to give you honor and to give you glory. God, I think of my friend Mary, oh God. I pray that you touch her body, oh God. Rip out, oh God, all the, the spirits of uh, of deformity in her hands, oh God. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would completely restore her hands and her feet, oh God. God, I pray you completely restore her voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, I lift up my uh, my brother Andre and this throat cancer. We curse the spirit of cancer in him and we say, be gone in the name of Jesus and be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Over Dorinda, God, I would just thank you, oh God, that you've touched her life and I thank you, oh God, that you're moving upon her and God, I just curse again this spirit of cancer and we cast it out right now in the name of Jesus and father I pray God uh, for everybody that's listening oh God that would have a physical ailment oh God 
Lord, I, I pray, even right now, Lord, Lord, I pray for people's minds. God, I pray for brains right now, God. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that they they would just be completely restored. God, I pray that all this, the neurons, the psyopses would come together. Everything within the, the prefrontal cortex of God would come together. God, that memory would be restored. God, in the name of Jesus, I declare that the, the gray matter be reduced, oh Lord, and that brain function come back to full capacity in the name of Jesus. With MS, God, I curse MS over people right now that it might be afflicting. And God, we declare healing over them. And blood problems, oh God, that the sugar levels will come back into alignment, oh Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for everybody, oh God, that's listening, that they would be touched by your power and by your fire. God, I believe that you're doing things, and we thank you, oh God, for your touch upon their lives. I thank you, oh God, for each one that's listening. And God, I pray that they would take your word and take the time, oh God, to seek your face, oh Lord, on a consistent and a regular basis. God, as we do this journey, we do it together, oh God, in you. Because, God, we believe that you have a great plan, that you have a great destiny, oh God, for each one that's going to be listening. And, Father, I thank you for them, and I bless them in the name of Jesus. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to me. I pray that uh, you just continue to take this word. Dive into it. Dive in deep to it, and let the Holy Spirit teach you. You know, I've always said, never just listen to somebody. Take the word and let the Holy Spirit teach you, because that's really what's going to matter. Guys, I pray you have a blessed week. I'll see you soon. In Jesus' name.